Hello. In this video, we'll provide an overview of the OpenM Identity and Access Management solution. We'll cover a number of topics, including user lifecycle management, self-service, request approval, web access management, and single sign-on. The first part of this demo will be focused on user lifecycle management. OpenM provides several options, which include integration with one or more source systems. Under this model, OpenM will respond to events such as user creation, position changes, or terminations in the source system. Once these events have been detected by OpenIM, OpenIM will then carry out provisioning and deprovisioning operations in the target application. Another way to manage the user lifecycle is through the OpenIM self-service portal, which can be customized to meet the needs of each customer's unique business needs. OpenIM also provides functionality where the admin can assist in the management of the user lifecycle as well. This next screen provides a very high level view of how an organization can have one or more source systems as well as one or more target applications, which are managed by OpenIM. Let's move over to the product demo. We'll start by logging into the admin portal so that we can use the automated provisioning functionality. The synchronization feature allows OpenIM to be integrated with a source system to enable automated provisioning. The same feature can also be used to import data from a variety of sources. On the screen, we see a number of out-of-the-box configurations that we can use to help jumpstart our project. Some of these configurations include integrations with SAP, Oracle EBS, CSV files, Active Directory, and databases such as MySQL. We will use the sync users from CSV configuration since we've already configured it for this demo. When we look at this configuration in more detail, we see some basic information which must be defined for all synchronization operations within OpenIM. These include details such as the source system so that OpenIM knows which source adapter to use the type of object that we want to sync, such as do we want to sync users or groups or an organizational structure. Okay. We should also define whether we want to do a complete sync or an incremental sync. And then finally, we should also define when this job should run. Do we want it to run now or do we want to set up a cron job to schedule when this will run? For this test, we created a CSV file with a few records. You'll notice that we're defining a role for each user. This role will determine which applications this user will be provisioned to and what permissions they will have within each application. For demo purposes, this is okay. But in real situations, the role should be determined dynamically based on one or more attributes, like a person's job title, department, etc. In this way, if a person's title were to change or if the manager were to change, we can assume that the job may be changing as well. And in this case, we should reevaluate their permissions. To sync this file, we'll upload the CSV file and then click on the Sync Now button to initiate synchronization. Next, we can check to see if provisioning was successful. We can do this using the header search feature. The user management UI is based on a template. This lets us customize the interface to see only the attributes that we care about. There's also a static view, which is called a classic view, which can be used to see all the attributes that have been captured within OpenAM. If we look at the identity section, we can see all the applications into which this user has been provisioned into and the identities for each system. This approach allows us to have a different rule for generating identities for each application. To see this user's entitlements, we can go to the user entitlement section. Here we can see the roles that this user is a member of and the entitlements that have been gained through these memberships. To ensure that provisioning to the end system was successful, we can look up the user in Active Directory using either the AD tools or an LDAP browser, such as Directory Studio. We can see that the user was successfully provisioned. Now that we have validated that our user has been provisioned into both OpenIM and Active Directory, we can log into the self-service portal using the newly created ID. The first time that you log in, you'll be asked to go through the first time sign-in process where you can set your challenge questions. This process is configurable and can be shaped to meet your company's unique needs, and you can add things like forcing a user to change their password, reviewing an IT use policy, or setting their mobile number. We could have also extended our first-time workflow to include a form which the user has to fill out. This could have been used to complement the information which was provided during the initial provisioning process. We were able to successfully log in into the self-service portal using the newly created account. The self-service portal provides end users with the ability to do SSO, 
request approval, profile management, and password change. For password changes, we have the option either to make changes which will be synchronized across all applications or to change the password for a specific application. To change the password for a specific application, we can use the change password extended feature. Prior to creating a request for a new access, we can review our access. The self-service portal lets you view your own access as well as the access privileges for each one of your direct reports. To initiate an access request, we can go to the access management part of the portal. Here we can request access from either the service catalog or from a list of job profile roles. For this demo, we'll use the service catalog. The service catalog can be broken out into a number of categories, which can be defined by the end organization. These categories can be used to simplify how end users can find their applications. When we select a category such as directory, we'll see a list of all the directories which have been integrated with OpenIM. For this demo, we will pick Active Directory. On the next screen, we'll see the list of available groups in our directory. The same concept applies to all of the types of applications that we may want to integrate. To continue with the creation of our request, we need to first select the entitlements that we want. These will get added to the shopping cart. After we have completed selecting the entitlements, we can go to the next screen and provide a justification for the request. We also need to provide a duration. If we do not provide an end date, then this request will be viewed as having permanent access. If we provide an end date, then the access will be revoked at the end of this period. Before the request is submitted, we are shown a preview of the request. If it looks okay, which it does, we can go ahead and submit it. Once the request is submitted, we can validate that this request went through by looking at the My Request option. Here we can see that the request has been created. We can also see the full list of approvers. If there were more approvers in this flow, we would have seen them here as well, along with the status and timestamp, indicating when each approval step was completed. Since the sysadmin is the approver for this request, let's log back in as the admin and review this request. Now that we're logged back into the self-service portal, we can go to the My Approvals or the inbox in the header to see the list of pending requests. Scrolling to the end, we see the request that we just created. After reviewing the request, we can decide if we want to approve or reject that request. We also have the option to delegate this request if needed. The self-service portal also allows you to define an out-of-office period. If this is enabled, then any request that comes in will be rerouted to that person designating the out-of-office definition. In this case, we'll approve this request. Since this is the only approval step, OpenAM will now update Active Directory with the requested group membership. Another important feature in the self-service portal is single sign-on. In the header, there's an icon which is the SSO Launchpad. When you click on it, you will see a list of all the applications that this user is entitled to. Some applications are more sensitive than others. To protect them, we have enabled step-up authentication with MFA. In this case, we're going to SSO to the web console, and before we can do that, the system will challenge us to provide an OTP token, which has been sent out via SMS. If the token is correct, we can continue to the application. At this point, we have covered the end-user-related features we plan to cover in the demo. In the next section, we'll take a look at some of the admin-related functionality such as auditing and the system configuration used to enable SSO and user provisioning. The log viewer in the admin console lets us see the audit events which were captured during the course of this demo. Click on the Actions button to see the details behind each event. For customers who have a SIM solution, it's also possible to export these events in either a CSV or a syslogs format. The next section looks at the configuration for SSO, which can be found under the Authentication Provider menu option. This configuration aligns with the SSO standard, which is being used by the application we want SSO to. In most cases, you will have to configure both the Open App side and the application side.
We started out this demo by provisioning a few users. The configuration to integrate systems such as Active Directory can be found under the Manage Systems menu option. From the Manage System Overview screen, we can see all the connections which have been configured and their status. If the connection is healthy, the health check will appear in green. If the connection is down, you'll see it in red. On this first screen, we define some basic connection information such as the IP and DNS name of the application. We also define the service account which is to be used and other connector specific details. In the case of AD, we also include attributes such as base DN and the search filter. To determine which attributes will be sent to the connector, we have to go to the policy map. In the case of Active Directory, we can define a map for various objects including users, groups, and computer objects. Regardless of the object type, we must define a list of attributes and the rules which will, be, which will provide the values for each attribute. In this screen, we can see under the attribute name column the list of AD attributes which OpenIM is going to control. Under the policy name, we see the list of Groovy scripts which will provide values for each one of these attributes. The reconciliation feature allows us to keep both OpenIM and Active Directory in sync with each other. It also allows OpenIM to address cases where changes were made in Active Directory directly. We can manage these conditions through the situations section. Once we have defined our provisioning connectors and authentication providers for SSO, we need to tie them together with the access control model. In this example, we'll take a role and add appropriate connectors and the authentication providers to that role. We can also add the application level entitlements here. For example, if we want to give someone access to salesforce.com, we can add salesforce as a resource and then add the appropriate application level entitlements as well. Earlier in the demo, we assigned role membership as part of the automated provisioning and deprovisioning process. While this is one approach, OpenAM also provides the option to control role membership using workflow. By going to the Approver Association section, you can define one or more approvers. This is a quick and easy way of defining the workflow. If you need additional control, you can also use the underlying workflow engine. In this last part of the demo, we will take a look at the Password Policy section. We have the option to define one or more password policies. Here you'll see that we can define the password composition, the forgot password rules, and rules for changing the password. Thank you very much for watching this demo. For more information, visit openam.com.